two, one, and we are live now. Um, welcome everybody today for our third edition of the Siegel Talks here from New York, from the Graduate Center CUNY. Uh, my name is Frank Henschger. I'm the, the artistic director of the Siegel Center. And with us today, we have the great Thomas Ostermeyer from the Schaubühne Berlin. The Siegel Talks are aimed to uh, really give a space in this time where we are so overwhelmed with everything to also think and to talk and listen in how the global theater community is trying to to, to, to make sense out of it, uh, what's on their minds, but also how they're dealing with everyday life and, and, and struggles. And um, in the time of Corona, we, we do live in. The Siegel Center, if I understand right, in all of big city of New York is the only center or theater center that is open and producing daily. Everything is closed. The streets are empty. The hospitals are full, uh, devastating numbers. And, um, and we are all affected by it. And, uh, so it's for us a, a, great, a, a great opportunity. And really, I'm so thankful for Thomas uh, to, to take the time to hear from the leaders um, in our field. You know, what, what, what does it mean for the theater? What does it mean for making art? What does it mean for our daily lives? What will change? And how is the, um, how is the um, um, situation? So um, Thomas, first off, uh, where are you? I'm in my home in Berlin. So you're in Charlottenburg or in Kreuzberg? Where, where are you? Schöneberg, between Charlottenburg and Kreuzberg. In Schöneberg, on the Rote Insel, yes. the Red Island. Uh, yes, close to the Red Island. Yes. The Red Island in Berlin. So um, what's the situation? The Schaubühne Berlin, one of the great ships on the ocean of, uh, uh, of theater. Um, what's happening? The situation is that we shut down like uh, two and a half weeks ago. And since uh, we are online we is for 12 days now every night uh, 6 30 we are streaming uh, great productions of the last 60 years of schaubühne berlin tonight our tonight uh, at 6 30 uh, p.m you can see uh, hamlet uh, which we were supposed to bring to new york in the fall to bam Mm -hmm. uh, we never brought this production to New York. Um, I, I doubt that, that, that we make it, but I, I do still hope to be in New York with this production in autumn. Um, and, and we're doing video conferences and we are providing our, our audiences with this streaming, but also at six o'clock before the streaming goes online, we have uh, every day another actor of the ensemble talking to the audience, reading a text, improvising, singing, making music, uh, something to, to tell the audiences out there that we are still existing and that we are hoping to, to find them uh, again soon in, in, in 3D dimensional theater. Um, and that's what's, what's happening. We started another campaign today. I've been asking a lot of um, important writers to um, make a contribution to our daily online event between 6 and 6.30. And uh, I can tell you that we have great writers like uh, Didier Eribon, but also Edouard uh, Louis, that we have people from United Kingdom, from Germany, from all over the world, uh, writing a, a special text. Uh, some of them are going to perform them. Milo Rau is also participating. Uh, famous uh, Swiss uh, political uh, director. And uh, some of them will uh, read their text uh, in front of a camera. Um, and others uh, who are a bit shy, like Didier Eribon, will be read by Nina Hoss. Uh, and this is going to start uh, something like in two weeks. Till then, we will have uh, the contribution of our ensemble of actors. Um, yeah, that's 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 the situation. That's a, it, as a, as a first uh, small answer to your question. I can also talk about the situation in Berlin, the overall uh, social situation, political situation, whatever you're interested in. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, thank you. I think that is a great idea. Um, much easier, I think, because of 
recording and union rights to stream the existing productions, but it's a wonderful look back uh, to, to the work the Schaubühne has done <clears throat> over a decade since its very, the very beginning and the uh, idea to invite artists and writers to react and read it. Maybe we get the text translated and we do it again at the Siegel with HowlRound and have an international context. The idea also is to see how is the global community doing. We had Taylor Mack and uh, Kristen Martin from the Here Art Center at the very beginning and they created something that's called Trickle Up. It's almost the idea uh, like a Netflix uh, for, for artists, mm -hmm. uh, like you could pay $10 a month and you will have access mm -hmm. to 50 artists who produce something, but the money that is generated goes directly um, um, to the artists, encourages them, and uh, perhaps is also mm -hmm. a, 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 a model. It's a, a trickle up New York, nyc.org. Um, I think it's a great, great thing. We yesterday spoke with uh, Mok Shi Yu from uh, Hong Kong, um, who said, you know, we are under lockdown, nothing really happens to here and there are rehearsals, but uh, he says the real fight is for us waiting, you know, for, for independence and for democracy. This is a pause, uh, and a terrible pause, but this is not even the big thing on our minds. Whenever you guys think mm -hmm. you go back to normal, for us, there will be others. Mm -hmm. We had uh, Shu Yi Liao, she is a great uh, choreographer from China, and she said she uses her time to to observe her body and the stillness. He says, this is all I have. I have a body and to, to, to her organs and thinking and going on from that. And Han Shen Feng, a uh, director and dramaturg, who said he's realizing that cyberspace is actually real. We all think it's not a real, but now it's part of our reality and it is real. And this is a, a, game, a game changer. So um, yeah, tell me a little bit, um, about your conversations with, with your fellow artists. You are a creative person. The Schaubühne is so known that one of the few theaters that actually thinks internationally, globally, productions are thought of, made, so they fit in the container, they can be done. You have different sets. Remember from your talk in the Siegel here, uh, last time you came, how important it is for you to be globally connected. So how mm. do you feel now? How, how do you as an artist feel in this moment? Well, there are a lot of different levels. There's a private person, there's the artist, but there's also uh, the political aspect of it all. I was thinking of that when you were mentioning the colleague from Hong Kong who is saying the real fight is uh, happening after Corona crisis, fighting for the independence. And I think also in the uh, other uh, parts of the world, the real fight is uh, to come after Corona crisis, because there is the danger that the extreme right uh, powers are uh, profiting of this situation, that people are asking for uh, security, that uh, nations are going to be rebuilt, that nationalism has an even bigger comeback as it already had before a Corona crisis. Um, what's happening in Europe uh, is that borders are closed again. Uh, every nation in Europe is, is putting up other different standards of security. Uh, France has, has incredible, severe uh, um, restrictions to the, to the freedom of, 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 of the people living in France. They're only allowed for one hour a day to go out one kilometer around the house. Uh, Sweden is doing the opposite. There's still uh, cafes, restaurants, everything is open. Uh, all these countries are part of uh, European Union and uh, it's, it's very depressing to see that in this moment of, of crisis uh, that the, the notion of nation is coming back and, and borders are being put up again and what's happening in, in in Hungary with Viktor Orban is even more depressing that he is taking this as a chance to install uh, um, uh, authoritarianism in his uh, so-called democratic country, which is part of the uh, European Union. So um, this is, this, these are my, my concerns as a political thinker that um, we are already in the middle of the fight against extreme uh, right and against violence of the extreme right. We had terrible attacks, as you know, uh, in the last uh, months on a synagogue in Halle. We had an attack 
on Turkish bars and restaurants in Hanau, where a lot of people were killed. Um, so we have, uh, we have terrible violence from the extreme right. Um, and and I'm, uh, I'm a bit afraid that, um, that this is getting even worse because the, the mentality of the people might look for more stability, for uh, conservative answers to modern uh, questions or to questions of modern time, because for sure uh, this crisis is also uh, a global crisis or a crisis of globalization or a crisis which is linked to uh, the reality of globalization because it can travel uh, the whole world in a very fast speed. Um, I'm, I'm very careful of giving any sense to what's happening here. There's a lot of talk going on of people saying, ah, oh, now we can uh, concentrate on ourselves again. We can take it as a break. Uh, where we can maybe invent uh, new uh, ways of, of thinking about the world, new ways of, of being as human, human beings in this globalized world. I'm, I'm very careful with this because, first of all, I don't think there's any sense to it. It's just a, mm -hmm. uh, an epidemic. It, it's a catastrophe. And uh, there is no interpretation to this, and, and nobody is, is guilty for what's happening. And a lot of people, uh, amongst them uh, Bill Gates, as I uh, just been reading uh, two days ago, uh, were already for years warning that this will happen, uh, a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic, and uh, that we are not well prepared. And and as far as we can see now we are not well prepared and we we do again face uh, something which is part of our social reality that um, the the poorest are suffering the most under this um, situation under this uh, situation of in, in germany for example there are a lot of um, what we call tafeln where people, homeless people or people living in precarity can go and get food for free. And this uh, food is coming from supermarkets at the end of the day, food they cannot sell anymore. And I do believe as far as I've heard, more than half of these institutions had to shut down because they don't get enough food anymore from the supermarkets because people are buying as crazy yeah. uh, as it can be uh, food in the supermarket. So there's nothing left for the really, uh, for, the, for the poor ones and the people uh, who are homeless and living in the street. So um, yeah, it is, uh, it is a test um, for our democracy, for our societies, but I'm afraid that some of our societies are uh, undergoing a, a much more severe test than others. I'm thinking of families, of people in precarity who do have to spend 24-7 uh, at home in a tiny little apartment with, I don't know, three kids, four kids, five kids. And of course, there is the danger of domestic violence under these yeah. uh, circumstances or psychological violence. So um, I think, I do believe, again, uh, we are not sharing all at the same degree the results of this epidemic. Uh, some can deal, I know a lot, a lot of people who left uh, New York, for example, who are lucky enough to have a little house close by and, and live outside New York. Uh, but this is also true for other parts uh, of the world. I do have friends in Paris who are lucky enough to have a beautiful house uh, in Bretagne and can go there. So uh, this is another reality than, uh, than being uh, somebody, what they call in France, uh, sans papier, which are immigrants who don't have any uh, 
passport or any ID card, uh, and 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 they live without any uh, without any social welfare in the street, under the bridge of the motorway in 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 Paris, and nobody can really take care of. Of these people, and we do have a comeback of family. Uh, all of a sudden, um, we are talking as if everybody of us has a family at home and can go home and spend their time with their family and and with their children. Uh, people in Paris, for example, who are not allowed to spend. Uh, time with other people only if they do share an apartment. But what is happening if you are living in a partnership? Is it a, a homosexual or heterosexual partnership? And your partner is not living with you in your apartment. You cannot meet. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to meet. Uh, I'm thinking about the devastating results for um, people working in sex industry. Uh, who don't have any uh, welfare, who don't have any possibility to survive under these given circumstances. And of course, because my, doc my, my, my brother is, uh, is a doctor and is running a, a hospital in the south of um, Germany, uh, my biggest concern is, of course, with these people working um, in the health sector, and uh, working, I don't know, do, some of them do have shifts uh, of 48 hours, um, nervous breakdown and trying to help, um, yeah, the people to survive and putting their own life at risk because uh, they might uh, get infected because there's not enough masks, there's not enough um, protection, uh, but all I'm saying here, I think, uh, it, it, as far as I heard, um, it's much more uh, severe in New York uh, what con yeah. when it comes to hospitals and, and health service. Here in Germany, we are still, my brother is always talking about, uh, my brother, the doctor, he's talking about that they are all in the hospitals, they are waiting for the tsunami. So uh, in Germany, uh, specialists, medical experts uh, do not think that we are already undergoing the tsunami, which means we are not there where the peak of the epidemic will happen. And people are expecting the peak, some do say in three weeks, others say in June. So this is also, um, Kind of perspective on 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 the future, which which is very frustrating and very depressing, because uh, it, it, there's still a long long way to go before we really know um, what what are the results of of this uh, of this terrible uh, situation. At the same time, I already. Um, yeah, already uh, people I knew um, did even die of, of Corona. Yeah. Who did you um, know? Um... Well, I can tell you because it, it was in the newspaper, but uh, the partner of uh, Klaus Wolverheit, who was our mayor, in very yeah. famous mayor in, 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 uh, in Berlin for years, his partner just uh, died on the last weekend. Um, as a result of of the virus, so it's 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 getting it's getting uh, it's getting close, and um, uh, and threatening. Mm -hmm. How is the feeling on the street? If you do you go out? Uh, do you wear a mask? Do you go out? And what do you see? You are such an observer, and uh, what do you pick up? Well, I do. I do go out. Um, I do go uh, jogging. I do go to the supermarket with my mask on. Um, um, Berlin is a strange uh, place, you know. Um, it, it's there was uh, in the in the first few days of um, of this situation, there were a lot of uh, people in the street. There were a lot of people in the on the playgrounds. There were a lot of people, uh, uh, kind of. 
let's say, deliberately ignoring um, the threat of the virus. Uh, there were even uh, what they called corona parties. So people were gathering to party mm -hmm. because uh, they, they didn't take it for serious. That has changed now, uh, fortunately, um, which means now uh, people do take uh, much more, um, do spend much more awareness when they go out, um, still, I'm, I'm surprised how many people you can find in the street when you mm -hmm. go out. And I'm, I'm always uh, wondering if, if it's really only the two who are allowed, because in Germany, you're only allowed to go out with, um, the people you share a flat with, so your partner or your children or uh, grandparents, uh, if they live with you. Um, but you're not allowed to be uh, outside in a group or together and have mm -hmm. a coffee. But this is still happening. Um, every now and then you can observe it. Uh, every now and then you can observe uh, people doing this. And I'm, I'm always uh, wondering why they're doing it um, and how, how, they, how they perceive this, uh, this situation. Because it is obvious uh, that we all have to be careful uh, and to flatten the curve. Uh, but everybody, mm. everybody knows it and it's so obvious. So it, 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 should, it should be different, yeah. but still, yeah, yeah Berlin is, is, is a city um, who, which survived the air bridge, you know, the isolation uh, of the Russians when the, when the Americans brought food uh, to the city. So uh, Berlin people always have this spirit of um, resistance of, uh, uh, very, very um, dark humor, um, very witty and, and cynical at times, and always with this belief, well, we survived the First World War, we, we survived the Second World War, we survived uh, the, the, the years of the Berlin Wall, we survived uh, the, the, as I already mentioned, this, this, this blocking uh, by the Soviets. So uh, we are not uh, to harm. Um, this, this is still a little bit the situation. And some of the people, when you go to the supermarket, are very hysterical. And you really can see the fear in their eyes, whilst other people are um, becoming uh, softer and, and, and nicer and, and taking care of others, people taking care of um, older elderly people, living alone, doing the shopping. Um, I've been doing shopping in my house for, for an older woman. I've been doing shopping for somebody who was infected um, by the coronavirus and was not allowed, allowed to go out. Mm -hmm. So it is times where you, where you need solidarity, but also times where you can find uh, solidarity, which is, which is a beautiful thing uh, to mm -hmm. see that there are people uh, taking care for others. Mm -hmm. But uh, for you, like to talk now um, as, as, as Thomas the artist, I mean, Hannah Arendt, she always talked about the private, the political, but the inside voice, <laughs> which she felt was lost, you know, or was ignore that's what so, so germany world so to the dark side well your inner voice what does it tell you what do you think about life and and death and in your house possibly and other is what are you, what are your thoughts at the moment what do you really what goes through your mind well part of what goes through my mind i've been already mentioning um the, the first and, and and most important thing for me is there is a lot of conspiracy theory out there, uh, which you can find in, in social media. There's a lot of disbelief out there. 
there's a lot of um, theories saying, ah, this is because uh, economy was going down and, and, and now they spread this virus and, and things like that. But also what's, what's happening is that, that people give to this event a, a strange esoteric touch. Mm -hmm. And um, this is for me uh, so important uh, in this situation to stay sober and, and, and to, to clearly separate between this catastrophe of, uh, of a epidemic mm -hmm. and social reality um, and political reality and not link these uh, things in, in a stupid way um, and, 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 and stay sober in the sense of, yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is a cat catastrophe, but we cannot give it more sense mm -hmm. than, it, than, it, than there is because there isn't any sense to this. There is no sense to this. You know, there are people, there are friends of mine saying, ah, yeah, okay, we need to show solidarity by social or physical distance. Maybe the virus wants to remind us of something mm -hmm. that we have to uh, um, digest it on our own, that we, that we have to show solidarity by um, cleaning something inside of ourselves. I don't believe in this. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. think... Uh, we should go into this uh, trap of giving um, um, a biological reality more sense than it has. It, it, it does not have more sense than, okay, we have to make sure that it doesn't hit us uh, that hard the way it can hit us. We have to make everything that it doesn't hit us. Um, when, you, when you ask for um, me being confronted with death and, um, and, and more existential questions about uh, life, at the moment I'm, I'm feeling numb. I'm, I'm, I'm really feeling like something hit me, mm -hmm. like as if you were walking in the street and then, uh, I don't know, uh, a cannonball hit you or a hammer hit you and you fall down and when you when you when you try to get up and and get back to your consciousness you feel numb and this is how i feel so i i i cannot uh, say really what it means or what it means to me or how i'm dealing uh, with it uh, in the moment or does it have any results um, on, on me thinking about art or on me thinking about, um, about human existence. I can only tell you what I'm missing, uh, but uh, what I'm missing is probably everybody else missing. I'm missing to go out with friends and have a drink. I'm, I'm missing the sound of a, of a bar with a lot of people. I'm missing the sound of a, of a restaurant. I'm missing uh, the social life. I'm, 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 I'm missing the vibe, which is in the air when you go to a concert. I'm missing the feeling in our foyer, in our entrance hall of our theater before show when people desperately try to get the last tickets and rushing in and um, I'm, I'm, I'm missing this feeling we had the day before we had to shut down our theater we had a premiere of Marius von Meinburg so I, I do still have very present this feeling of a premiere where mm -hmm. everybody's excited not only the people on stage and behind um, the decoration, but also the people in the foyer, the people coming to see the premiere, everybody is excited. So these social events where you, where you by the pure um, feeling, 
you you don't even have to talk to somebody you feel the vibe in the air of of the social uh, community of of people coming together celebrating something in the end uh, uh, theater is uh, even though it is very often uh, dealing with uh, death and 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 questions of power and and uh, and the evil and and terrible tragedies in the end um, theater is a celebration of life yeah. Um, and and a celebration of uh, we are celebrating the death, the people who are dead but left behind a beautiful place and their beautiful thoughts. So um, not being able to celebrate this uh, anymore, this coexistence of life and death, um, I miss. I miss a lot. So um, I'm numb. And I'm I'm missing um, I'm missing a lot of things. I'm I'm missing uh, also to 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 meet people and take them in my, in in my arms uh, and and to say hello. And um, I'm I'm missing this uh, yeah a, a lot of things which which makes it uh, worse uh, to be on this planet. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, and uh, really for for sharing. And um, this society, perhaps, as you said, has not prepared. Uh, Trump famously um, cancelled Obama's um, um, a council for such uh, epidemics. Um, in the United States, the most probably the richest country, one of the most ingenious countries in the world, cannot produce fifty cents face masks. Um, news come out that even <laughs> tubes that go in for the in case if you even have the respirator machines they are running out of tubes and that was known uh, four six eight weeks ago that this might be more now so how i how can be produced the hospitals have been starved and a lot of infections do happen because of catastrophic hygienic procedures and also uh, um, of uh, clearly the politicians who now say you stay inside we're also the one who didn't take care of the basics, um, especially in America. I think Germany still is a, a good example of how perhaps it will be handled in a better way. We all will see, but uh, numbers still are encouraging, but still has theater yeah, in a way. I, yeah? I want to add something here because mm -hmm. uh, before we went online, you've been uh, telling me about the disastrous situation of artists in, in New York. Um, who I will send my uh, solidarity here, um, even if it's only sp spiritual, but I'm, I'm with, uh, with these people in my mind. And I also wanted to add, um, there is in Germany a similar situation for the independent artists. So artists who are not under a permanent contract the theater, the, the people working in our theater, uh, 220 are under permanent contracts. Um, we are now on a term which is called in German uh, Kurzarbeit, mm -hmm. which means that um, we are officially um, not asking our employees to work. So they are on zero per percent of working hours, and they get um, sixty percent of their wages. They get and salaries they get uh, from the state, and we are adding another thirty percent. So everybody working as a permanent employee in Schaubühne gets ninety percent of their monthly um, mm -hmm. uh, of their monthly uh, um, salary um, this is for the moment uh, very good solution for us and for the people working with us this will stay uh, or this is possible to stay uh, for the next few months maybe even for half a year without us um, as a company uh, being too much in danger because Schaubin is a private 
which is which is uh, special as a German mm -hmm. theater institution. It's a private theater. We are not owned by the city or by the state. We are a private theater, even though we get uh, subsidies by uh, subsidies by by the city. But we are as a team um, who are running the Schaubühne. Uh, we are uh, ourselves responsible for this. Um, for this uh, company. Um, but there are, of course, a lot of um, independent actors, independent uh, directors, independent uh, uh, costume designers and so on. And they are um, finding themselves uh, in precarity, like from one day to another, um, because they don't have a job, because uh, their show is not taking place because the performance is canceled and so on. And um, I have to say, and I have to admit that Germany is really trying to find good solutions for these uh, people. And uh, the city of Berlin uh, has been putting up a kind of um, what they call Schutz uh, shield. So it's a safety uh, protection shield. shield for people um, who are independent artists. And I've, I heard uh, a lot of my friends who are independent artists did get uh, money on their account today. So they've been applying online uh, on Saturday and uh, already today on Wednesday, uh, they got 5,000 euro uh, to pay their rent, uh, to have something to eat and, and to survive the next, uh, I don't know, two, three months. Mm. So uh, here I really have to praise <laughs> the city of Berlin and the responsible politicians in this city for being very effective and, and non-bureaucratic a very unusual for German institutions, uh, this immediate um, mm -hmm. help without any bureaucracy. So there are some uh, good news uh, in this uh, uh, in this situation. Uh, but again, I mean, I'm talking probably mostly to an American audience here. Um, big, big difference to the United States. Yeah. It's amazing. Maybe you could sign up uh, for trickle uh, up nyc.org for Taylor and others. You know, it would mean a lot to them to have you, yeah. your name on there, others. But um, the question is ha have we as the theater makers been prepared in a way also for times like this? Are we thinking about all the people you talked about earlier the homeless, the, uh, the sex workers, people who um, don't have the permanent jobs? Has our theater being reaching them, or can we now do something, or will we do something that maybe also it looks as them for an audience? The healthcare workers who are now working overtimes, like your brother, is there something that theater can offer, or is this? Yeah, well, there, of course, there's something theater can offer. Uh, first of all, what we are already offering, and, and we do get incredible feedback, is the streaming of 60 years of. Uh, Schaubühne, and we are putting these streams online for free, mm, um, mm. which is which is incredible because um, it's only possible because the artists on stage agreed, because the teams for set design, costume design, music directors, they all agreed uh, that it is for free. And uh, we, we even found an agreement with the publishing houses because a lot of the writers are um, still alive from the place or it is a translator or somebody who did the adaptation. But even there, we found an agreement. A lot of the people um, did tell us that they don't want to be paid, like Marius von Meinburg, who did all the Shakespeare translations for me. Um, and we found an agreement with a lot of publishing houses 
and so that they, they they get a, a tiny little amount of money which hopefully they do give uh, to their writers because uh, writers as always in theater are the last in line and the ones uh, who are very bad badly paid in in the in the theater system if you ask if we were prepared i I think, and we probably have been talking about this when we had our artist talk uh, in the Siegel Center when I was in New York the last time. I'm, my theater was always uh, trying to talk about uh, social realities, trying to talk about um, the rich and the poor, uh, trying to talk about uh, uh, a society of class, uh, I mean, one of the last shows I brought to St. Anne's Warehouse in Brooklyn was uh, Returning to Reims by Didier Eribon, which is a book about uh, the failure of the social democratic parties in the Western world, um, which is about the triumph of neoliberalism, uh, which is about uh, how this poison of neoliberalism even infected uh, social democratic parties who, who do have a historical mission to take care of the poor and the people working hard and not earning a lot of money. Uh, so I, I was trying to attack these uh, issues, these questions, and we're dealing with a lot of effects of this neoliberalistic ideas. You're dealing with it in the corona crisis in your hospitals. Great Britain is dealing with it, with their national health service. France is dealing with it. I've been talking to Didier Eribon, who's going to write a text for us about this issue. And he says uh, there, have, there have been disastrous cuts in the health system in France. And now they do have, uh, um, even, if, even though they don't have as many people infected like in Germany, they have a lot of uh, a lot more people dying, and maybe this is linked to the fact uh, that uh, their health care system is not um, at the best uh, state of the art. Mm. Um, have we been prepared? I mean, I think um, if you if you look uh, on 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 the reality of of theater makers in Berlin, but also in London or in, in, in New York or in Paris. Let's face it, our audience is a bourgeois audience. 90% of it is a bourgeois audience. And uh, the bourgeoisie, the class of the bourgeoisie are the ones who are paying to be entertained. And uh, what I'm saying here is not um, new, is no news because this is uh, Bertolt Brecht talking when mm -hmm. he uh, wrote his famous text uh, Rede an die Schauspieler where he, where he said uh, actor do be aware that you are hired by the entertainment industry um, of the bourgeoisie and uh, yes they want to be ent entertained. Yes, they want to be put into question. They want to be uh, more or less mirrored with our work, uh, but they don't want to be existentially put into question or their mm -hmm. uh, reality of living um, in a class um, system where some do have more and a lot of people do have nothing. Uh, they don't want this to be put into question. So if you're asking me, uh, have we been prepared to this? Maybe I'm going to sit here. So the yeah, there's a corona of the sun now in your, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is there from Enemy of the People, right? The set design in front, in the back of you for our Yes, listeners. that's mm -hmm. a beautiful painting. Um, paying tribute, of course, everybody can see to Jean uh, Basquiat, famous uh, New York painter, uh, but it, it, it is paying tribute and it was um, 
done by Katharina Zinke for the set of uh, Enemy of the People. Um, I don't know where I stopped, so maybe we go on. <laughs> Yeah, um, you mentioned Brecht, and uh, we, we also talked ah, yeah, about Yeah, I mentioned Brecht, yes, and I mentioned the fact which, which audience we're talking to. So to answer your question, have we been prepared? Is, uh, is, uh, your question is not only an artistic question. Your, your question is a political question. So uh, if you're asking me, have we been prepared to find ourselves in a globalized neoliberal world, uh, no, no. We did probably not fight enough against it. So as political people, uh, we haven't been, we are not prepared. As artists, I'm doubting that we, with our art, can bring change here. As a colleague from Hong Kong, has been mentioning, I, I do believe that he is um, thinking about bringing change by being in the street. Uh, of course, with our theater, with our literature, with our movies, we can accompany these movements. We can bring thoughts, we can bring reflection, we can, uh, we can bring new voices on stage so that they are heard. We can bring people on stage who usually do not have a stage to talk about their situation, to talk about the misery and so on. That's important to have a stage where you are heard, but change will only come from the street and not from the stage. The stage is, is, is a place um, I mean, there are people who, who, who tell us that the Greek theater has been invented um, after the Persian wars. So theater maybe needs peaceful times to develop mm -hmm. their beauty. Um, going back to Brecht, and we mentioned that also yesterday, um, Brecht said his theater is a theater for the children of the technological age. We moved into the digital age and uh, we do theater entertainment or performances for the children of the uh, digital age. Do you think theaters like the Schaubühne will now develop something like in Germany, we have the Drei Spaten Theater, like the three, like ballet, opera, drama. Will Schaubühne also, we will have an online army, we'll have a digital, when this is over, where we have a presence or is theater, will you do theater, theater? No, I'm doing theater because it is not two-dimensional. I, uh, in a lot of my uh, writing on theater, I've been always stressing the point, what is the power of theater? Why is theater an important art form? And I do believe theater is an important art form because people are sharing a space and what's happening is only happening in front of their eyes in this very moment. So it's a beautiful representation of life because life is only happening in one moment and then it's gone. When you're dead, it's gone. And theater is born and is dying every night. When the curtain goes down in the end, it's over. You cannot bring it back, even if you do um, television versions or, or uh, you install like we did for all of our shows which we are showing online now they are all produced with uh, something between three or eight cameras but even if you put eight cameras you cannot capture the, the atmosphere you cannot capture um, the electricity which is in the air and difference to uh, the movies in the movies the director with editing is deciding where you're watching so it's a very dictator dictatorial way mm -hmm. of putting something uh, into performance art because it's always the director now you're looking to the uh, shoe of the actor now you're looking to the knee 
Now you're looking into her eyes. The next moment you're looking into his eyes. I'm deciding for you. In theater, this is not the case. You're always deciding yourself where you are watching. And I do believe in these times where most of what, what we are um, breathing or communicating with the world is happening via a screen. Um, and if it is uh, produced and not live, uh, people are photoshopping, people are editing, people are doing post-production. So the, everything which what you see, like let's say you see a, a, a scene between two actors, they had on the set, they had 30 takes for it. And then the director decided which one was the best. And this is the one who's, which is going online. And uh, even worse, when we talk about fake news, when we talk about how videos, how photos can be faked today. So my view on, on theater is, this is the power of theater that what's happening in front of your eyes, what the actor is doing in this very moment, is happening now and there and if he's failing or or not he cannot fake it it's happening so for me it's it's the most beautiful uh representation of life a, a painting you take you take some of my painter friends they take months to do a painting and then it's finished and they're always correcting and here they do always work mm -hmm. on it in in theater it's not possible it i am witnessing the moment of creativity of the actor so i'm witnessing the the life moment and 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 the life of art being produced in front of my eyes and i think this is the power of theater so i that's why i don't believe in a digital um, versions uh, or I mean I do believe in digital versions because I'm, I'm streaming every night another show of our theater mm. but I don't believe that there is a future where um, the digital can replace uh, mm -hmm. the theater. So Schaubin will not have uh, an online uh, content. Uh, this will be with the Whitney's of the world and the Hamburger Bahnhofs and others. Um, to, to we have, I, yeah, we have we have an online uh, existence. We have yeah. um, we have our website. On our website, you can follow all our panels mm -hmm. we're doing. We yeah. have a lot of political panels. We had the the, the, the greatest thinkers, uh, philosophers sociologues of the last two decades have been to Schaubühne, have been given talks. Mm -hmm. All this you can still see online in video versions. Um, we do have trailers on how we produce. Uh, we do have cameras in our rehearsal room and we do put little trailers of three minutes or sometimes 15 mm -hmm. minutes where we're giving interviews, where we're talking about our work. So this, we, we do have a, yeah. a digital existence, but, but all this is for the event of the evening. The evening. Thomas, what are you reading at the moment? What are you listening to? Are you discovering something? You know what? I, I, I've been piling uh, uh, books on my, on my desk. <laughs> I yeah. thought, okay. Now I'm, I'm, I'm going to read all uh, these books. Uh, one of the book is, um, now please help me because I, otherwise I go to my uh, desk, um, Four Lives, this book by this uh, American uh, writer. Oh, you don't know you will have name. to go to your desk, but we will. I will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have to entertain the people. Yeah, so he, here we see uh, have a moment in Thomas Ostermeyer's apartment in uh, Schöneberg. And 
uh, getting his book from his book stand um, what he is um, reading now um, at the moment. And I think these are uh, great, uh, great comments from him on, on theater. We um, also will continue tomorrow. We will have uh, Hermana and Marco from Teatro delle Albe in Italy, from Ravenna, the Dante town, the Dante uh, wrote a uh, part of the Divina Commedia they uh, finished, they have been working on. And uh, on Friday, we will have uh, Toshiki um, Okada um, with us, with this great shellfish company who actually moved his family out of um, uh, Tokyo uh, after the Fukushima disaster. So um, stay tuned. And now Thomas um, is back and shows <laughs> us what he's reading. Yeah. <laughs> This is not prepared. I of course not, yes. People will not believe that, uh, that this is not prepared. So the guy is called Hanya Yanagihara. Mm -hmm. And it, it is in, uh, it, I'm reading it in German, even though I could read it in English. Here we have um, a new book of Katja Kipping. Katja Kipping is the leader of the uh, Die Linken. Mm -hmm. um, leftist movement, yes. In, 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 she's <coughs> sitting in the Bundestag and in this book she's writing about new left majorities. Here I have a writer, but I, I, I didn't, uh, uh, I did not even open it now. Live run, Allegro Pastel. Uh -huh. This is all um, this is very interesting about Ronald Czernikow. Do you know, did you ever hear about Ronald Czernikow? No. He wrote a beautiful book, which is called Kleinstadt Novelle. And this is a, a, a biography about him, which is called The Letzte Communist. Because this guy- The last communist, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. this guy moved to East Berlin from, he, he, he came from West Germany he moved to East Berlin in the summer of 89 <laughs> before the war <laughs> came down because he was a convinced uh, communist. And only to mention another uh, uh, great um, thinker uh, living in the States, Stephen Greenblatt, uh, yeah. always a good choice. Yes. When it comes to theater, he, he, he's uh, uh, writing about something else. By the way, Stephen Greenblatt is also going to write a short text for our online mm -hmm. existence. Uh, last but not least, um, this is the book I'm working on. This is oh, where, yeah. when Corona crisis happened, this is what I've been working on because I'm doing a stage version of Virginie de Pont, Bernard Subutex. Great, yeah, um, I read all three, yeah, it's fantastic, yeah. Yeah, and in the middle of rehearsals, we had to stop and we are probably postponing our um, premiere because premiere was um, scheduled on the 8th of May. I don't believe we can do it at this moment. So we will not hear the special um, music of the DJ and the last lost uh, tapes, uh, which everybody was hunting in the three things. We got a, a question from one of our listeners, Marlon Tarnoff, going maybe back to your Brechtian idea and a, a question, you know, she said the coronavirus. Marlon, Marlon Tarnoff is a friend of mine. Oh, it's a friend of yours. The coronavirus shows how the free market can solve all the problems. How do you see the change of the state organizing the whole economy? Move. Ah. It's a big question for the end, I know. Two big questions. I can, again, I can only uh, recommend uh, some people writing at the moment and, and, and asking uh, these questions. Um, there's one guy, another book in front of me, which is holding my iPad while I'm talking to you. So I'm, re I'm recommending to read Geoffroy de la Ganerie because he is uh, uh, thinking about this question, um, how, to, how to change. And he's also going to write a text. So be prepared to, um, to listen to these guys. He's very critical uh, of what's happening in France and the measurements uh, happening uh, installed by Macron. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, he does believe um, 
it's it's close to authori authoritarianism. Author yeah, authoritarian state ideas. Yeah. yeah, and it's true. I think you're warning also about the rise that already is there of the right. The revolutions only happen when things has already happened. They are the end result, yeah. and and it's uh, we are all uh, concerned. I mean. Hitler combined the great idea of nationalism and that idea mm. of socialism, of the folk, mm. of the people, and combined mm. it in national, national socialism. And we all know uh, where it ended. Mm. I think hopefully we in Germany have vaccinations in our uh, system still from that. And I'm not um, sure. That we are protected, I hope. I truly hope so. But it is uh, concerning everywhere um, in the world. And I think this is why we do need representation on stage, at least as a, you said, as a mirror or as a reinforcement. And to make you make you think again, uh, Thomas. Really, thank you for taking time. Uh, your your work on this stage is so extraordinary, and uh, and as you said, you have always uh, wrestled with these issues. I saw also the Italian night, the Horvath piece, that also shows the beginning of what happens. The little changes that suddenly, you know, from a light green goes to a dark green, and the brown, you know, as the great Richter painting showed. So. Um, um, and thank you, and maybe we, we check in again. We, who knows how long that takes. Let us also know if there are people we should um, talk to. Maybe we can co collaborate uh, with the writers who react in Europe and the people you called. And, um, and um, I hope uh, this all will, will be hopefully over soon. If there's one advice you might give to a young artist, a young actor or a young director or a young writer right now at the moment, what would you tell to them? There's often no space, no money. No, there is no space and no money for the arts, especially in New York. But what would you tell an artist, a young artist? Well, I can, I can, I'm, I'm teaching young artists. Um, now I'm, I'm giving online seminars for my directing students. I can see that um, there's big fear and that they are really um, asking themselves in what kind of reality uh, all of a sudden, they are starting their careers in theater. And the only stupid advice I can give them, um, take it easy. You are, uh, nevertheless, uh, the future generation. And even though you have to start your, your career and your work and your life in the art at, at, in a terrible moment, in a very difficult moment, um, it'll be over uh, in, in one or two years. And you can, you can take the chance of reading more, of uh, looking more at, uh, there's, there's not only our presence uh, online with uh, theater. There are other German theaters who are online. There's a beautiful website, which I recommend here, which is called Ubu, uh, who has an incredible stock of uh, avant-garde performances mm -hmm. of the 20th century. So you can do study. Um, your studies might be a bit longer because we are all in this uh, situation where we cannot uh, meet and where we cannot uh, perform in front of an audience, but uh, it it it'll it'll be it, we will overcome <laughs> this. And uh, one thing is for sure: the moment where we have, for example, vaccination for it, and where we all know this is over, it will be an incredible party and it will be a celebration of life for for weeks maybe and we will have a beautiful uh, resurrection of of the performing arts and we will have a lot of people in the theaters we will have a lot of audience because we are all craving mm -hmm. to be again in a theater space and sharing the theater experience with other audience members Great. So Thomas says, prepare, prepare well also for us as audience members, as the theater makers. Thomas, thank you so much. Thank you to all our listeners. Thank you to HowlRound at Emerson College for hosting us. I know it's a big thing for them to do it every day, but it is important that we hear a global voices. The Siegel Center always bridges academia 
and professional theater, international and American theater at the Credit Center CUNY in New York. So this is, a, a, at least for us, a small contribution to stay together, share the loneliness of also our thoughts and also celebrate that some way we are connected. Thank you, Thomas. And uh, tomorrow, Teatro delle Alba from Italy, Ravenna. And it will be interesting to hear what our Italian colleagues and friends will say. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.